Xin Chow, what's up everybody? All right, this has been a requested video. I've gotten emails about it, comments about it, so we're gonna shoot it. Let me do a little posey pose for the thumbnail. Okay, so, how to move to Vietnam. I thought I kind of covered this in a lot of other videos, but we shall compress it all in the one video. How to move here, how to live here, and how to work here. I'm gonna give you what I know and my information. I am not an expert. I urge you to research on your own as well. I'm just giving you background of what I know. So, first things first, they do not have a great visa program right now. Uh, Pre-COVID, we had an amazing uh, visa situation here. We had a one-year tourist or business visa. You could just apply for either one. You did not need a letter of invitation for the business visa. If you were just coming on an intent to do business or start a business, you could have got that business visa. And that visa was easier to turn into a TRCA working permit, essentially, if you were going to stay past the year. Now, you still needed to leave the country every 90 days to redo your stamp. They had talked about changing that to every 30 days, but not having to leave and just going to the immigration department at whatever city you're in and having your stamp redone for $10. We don't know what it's gonna look like when they bring it back. The newspapers are feverishly writing every single day about bringing back these old visas. So usually what happens when they write about it in the newspaper like that is it comes back. They pretty much, the newspaper was just destroying <laughs> Vietnam on the restrictions to enter the country and every news place was just writing articles on it daily and then out of nowhere the government's like all right let's just drop all the shit just come in so there's no restrictions to come in right now you just need a 30-day e-visa now you can extend that e-visa you can get you can just keep redoing them back to back to back and do a border run to Cambodia I have a video for that that I will link at the end it'll be the video that goes after this one if you do watch this one all the way through which I would appreciate if you did watch it all the way through. If you do find this information helpful, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel too. If not, no worries and keep it moving. But that's your first big hurdle, is if you just wanna come out here and explore, right now you're pretty much held in, be held into the 30 day e-visa that you would have to do a border run every 30 days to Cambodia or Laos. Now that Laos is open, you can do that as well. There are services that take you in like a limo truck over this for $30. The video I'll be linking will have one of these services included in the description. So if you wanna have your hand held instead of taking the public bus and, and take a limo, they call these limos, these vans, then you can do it that way. So you'll have the options. But me personally, I would probably want that one year visa back to explore. Now there's other options. If you legitimately plan on working here and you, you really actually have qualifications, you have experience in a certain skill and you have years of work behind it and a degree, uh, you can actually get a, a regular job. You, can, you don't have to teach English here. That is such a big, huge misconception that the only thing a foreigner can do here is teach English. I know so many people that do not teach. In fact, I'm not friends with one teacher. I can't tell you one teacher I'm friends with. Most of them that I meet, I don't enjoy. They're, they're kind of bitter. They're usually alcoholics too. I'm, I'm not trying to generalize, but the ones I've met. So this is just my personal experience. Most of the teachers I've met are not people I particularly want to hang out with. I'm sure that there's great ones out there and stuff, but for the most part, actually I know one girl that's pretty cool. I don't know if she's still here. I haven't talked to her yet a year plus but she was actually pretty nice and she had a good attitude about it but she had actually a really high paying like 100k a year uh 150k a year usd teaching in college she had a super high credential so college educated she had all the right stuff to, to get that kind of job but you can completely get a what we call a normie job where it's not teaching you can you know if you're a programmer there's a couple programmers in the, the Discord. They got regular jobs at like, you know, different companies that are uh, established here. 
and they're getting paid a decent wage. I also have a, another buddy that works in the alcohol business and he has a really good job too where they, you know, he gets paid a very good fee for like what he does here. Uh, so you don't have to get a teaching job. And what I would do if I was you is I cross the road like I don't care. That's how you cross the road here. I'm gonna wait for this white car to go and then I'm gonna go in front of this Mitsubishi. But if you're gonna to want to get a job here, you can get it ahead of time and a teaching job. All these things can be had ahead of time. You don't have to wait and come here and then try to find a job. You can start applying for these all over. There's glass door. There's a couple other places that have all kinds of good stuff. I've been getting pretty good offers in my specialty, which is uh, Cisco engineer. There is some decent paying Cisco engineer, like head running of the department of the IT jobs here that are paying three thirty-five hundred to five thousand bucks a month. So if you've got credentials and you're willing to work, you know, 40, 50 hours a week, you can easily find a job here, especially if you're qualified and you have years of experience in that said field. So if you do want to come here and stay here and work here, I would highly advise that you go ahead and start applying for jobs. Do that right now. Get your resume together and just start applying and start applying and see if somebody will hire you. And then they will take care of all the paperwork for you. Once you're hired from them, they'll get your TRC, they'll get everything. They'll, they'll literally take care of all the paperwork of, of coming here to live. So. That is pretty much the best route, especially if you're gonna work here. Now, there's the other angle. Like, you know, I came here as, you know, a tourist. And I had always kind of planned the home base here, but my plan was not to get married. It was to just world travel all the time. I happened to meet an amazing woman and we get along great. And you know the rest, we got married. So now I live here on a uh, marriage visa essentially it's a trc they get. you can also get a five-year visa exemption with that to where you can stay i think 90 days at a time before you got to exit so if you get married you can also get residency here for, for longer terms um it's going to be a bit tricky to do staying here you know for a year without the regular visas back yet i anticipate any day they're going to bring those visas back guys so like you could see it happen at any particular time. You know, in two days they could go, okay, we're bringing back all the old visas. Uh, a lot of people think people take advantage of the tourist visa, whatever you want to do, I don't care. You know, they created that space for that to happen here. So they knew exactly what was going to happen. If they were smart, they would offer a, I hate the term digital nomad, but they would offer some kind of digital nomad visa where you can stay for like two years for a thousand bucks or fifteen hundred bucks and people would come here and they would pay that that's that's an acceptable price for for staying here and then be able to establish a, a banking account here and stuff before covid they started changing a lot of the rules for people that were staying here on these tourist visas banking was a big one like techcom bank started pushing out anybody that had a tourist visa that you could only do transactions at the bank they would cancel your debit card. Um, a lot of banks started doing that. You know, they, they weren't gonna let you get a regular checking account with a debit card if you're on a tourist visa. They would ask you to bring in a TRC to get your debit card back, essentially. So I imagine it's still like that. I'm sure you can open a checking account here. In fact, I know you can. I already have somebody here that's uh, been here for like a month and he opened a checking account. And then you can just do wire transfers and then pull cash out in person at the bank. But it, it's, I don't advise you to come and stay here on a tourist visa. Even if they bring that system back, it is not probably the best idea. Now there's other routes you can take. A lot of people were buying like bogus. They were going through like other agents or maybe some other YouTubers that were shilling some service pre-COVID where you could get a TRC investment visa for like 1800 bucks. 
and they knew nothing about it, they would just pay the 1800 bucks and be like, hey, I get to live here for two or three years. I'm, I'm stoked. I don't care what this thing actually is. And what that was, was, was kind of a big scam, to be honest with you. You were becoming an investor for a company here that a Vietnamese person owned. And then that company was filing for a loss every year. So they were saying they made zero dollars and they would pay zero taxes. And then you as an investor, since they were losing money every day, you were losing money. So you never really had to pay taxes or anything. And that's where they got pissed off. Same with the tourist visa. A lot of people were coming here on a tourist visa for multiple years and like working full time teaching jobs and stuff and not paying any taxes to the Vietnamese government. And the taxes here are super low. There's no reason to skip it. And they even started exiting out like, uh, they started going to schools and checking the paperwork. And if you didn't have like a diploma, a college diploma in that field and experience, they were pretty much blacklisting you and kicking you out of the country. Happened to quite a few people I knew. So yeah, I don't know that those glory days of staying here for like, shit, I knew a guy that was here for five years on a tourist visa. He just kept buying 90 days at a time. So I mean, I don't know how much longer those, I don't know if those glory days will come back. You're gonna wanna set yourself up properly for a stress-free environment here. So, <coughs> oh, <sorry. coughs> excuse me. So, you know, your routes are, your best route is to gonna be to get a job, to like get a real actual job. And I think even on a part-time, you can get some places to get you a TRC and do all that stuff for you. It depends on how qualified and what the field is and what you're going to do. So we've covered that part of how to live here, move here. Um, other things you're going to want to do, if you plan to stay here for two, three, four years, sell everything you have and give, give away what you can. There is no point in wasting money on a storage locker in America spending 200 bucks a month for shit that you're never going to use anyways like you know the few mementos i had i just sent to my mom it wasn't much it was just a little box full of stuff and the rest everything i got rid of like if you go back and watch my first month of the channel what i came with on my very first video on the scooter bike the son the scooter bike driver that's all i own now i have accumulated more stuff here i've got a motorcycle i've got dj gear I've got uh, a laptop, I've got camera equipment, we bought a TV for the apartment, we bought a washer and dryer, we bought a couch, and we bought a bed. And that's like really, I have not been reaccumulating things again, because there's no need. You know, I don't know how long term me and Winnie are going to stay here for. You know, we might move to Seoul or Japan or, or somewhere else at some point, you know. I'm not locked into Vietnam forever, although I would be happy being here forever. I absolutely love Saigon. Like, it's a wonderful city to me. I have a great time here. Everybody's super positive. All the people I know are great. I've got a, a great group of friends. So, I mean, I would advise you, if you're gonna make the move here, do not rent a storage unit. Do not hold on to a bunch of shit. If you didn't use that thing every day, you don't need it. I mean, there's heavy truth in that. So. Just get rid of what you don't absolutely need. And I promise you, it's probably a lot of stuff that you can get rid of and sell. Now, I know Gary V on the uh, internet goes viral for saying how easy it is to sell shit on the uh, Facebook marketplace and all this. It is not. You're gonna take a major loss on a lot of your stuff. Like I had to sell stuff at 50, 60, 70, 80% loss before I moved here because that market doesn't exist as it used to. There's too many people doing that as a grift now. Like, that guy's such a joke. Everything he says is just total bullshit. He's the new Tim Robbins, like, just a common scam artist. But everything that comes out of that guy's mouth is garbage. It is not easy to sell stuff like that on the marketplace. You're gonna take a bath on it. You're gonna lose the money, just lose the money. I ended up giving away so much stuff. Like, you know, I had a bunch of stuff. I had a bunch of grow equipment for when I was doing cannabis, gave that shit all away. I had rosin presses for pressing uh, cannabis into rosin for, for dabs, gave all that shit away. I gave away so much stuff, I don't even know the amount, but, and the amount of stuff I gave to Goodwill and stuff too, insane. I gave all my clothes, and I had nice clothes, like there was a period in time where 
I bought kind of more expensive shit, so. But I don't need a lot of things. Like, after you make this lifestyle change and you kind of become like a, God, I hate this term so much. But after you become like a digital nomad, um, you don't need much, man, you know? Like, like I've always said from the beginning of the channel, the, the goal is to make enough money from ad revenue and everything else per month to where I can go on some kind of world adventure every 60 days. And we're getting close to that. I think within the next six months to a year, I'll be able to do that. I'll be able to go to a new country every every other month, essentially. I don't want to be along, away from my wife too much. Hopefully I can make even more and then maybe she can quit her job. I can pay for everything and she can come travel with me. Of course, I'd have to get her a US passport and all that stuff because the Vietnamese passport is super weak. It's like really, really weak. So you can't do much with it. But yeah, you guys got to get rid of all your stuff. Don't be having any leftover bills. You absolutely should not finance a cell phone in America. I don't know why people still do that, but don't finance your cell phone. Only buy an unlocked phone if you plan on moving here because you're locked cell phone won't do shit here you won't be able to put a sim card in it so my recommendation is just start getting rid of all that shit like i had intentions to keep my my cell phone number and stuff i just got rid of it i got a google voice i'm fine with that like i got rid of everything all bills all everything when i came here though i was making pretty decent money per month I was having like $3,000 in residual income from contracts and two of the major companies that had those contracts, they went bankrupt. They were toy companies. I don't know if you know much about like toys in America. It's not really too hot of a market anymore. Uh, kids like to play more with like iPads and iPhones in America now. So that kind of pushed that market out and it was just, you know, it was unfortunately bad timing. Like uh, there was a few months there where. I struggled definitely quite a bit, but I was able to then bounce into YouTube really hard and, you know, if you guys watch the channel, you see I put out two videos a day, so I have a very good work ethic. We get 250,000 views a month, so the views are are what keeps me able to pay my bills, so I'm not in like a heavy profit zone in any kind of way. I'm able to pay my bills, have a, have a bit left over to go out and do stuff, and that's really it. So I kind of just need to double the numbers. If I can get to 500,000 views a month, which I think is very possible this year, then that'll take care of a lot for me because my ad revenue comes from top paying back countries, you know? Australia, America, some country I never heard of is in the top three now. I'll have to look at it, but I'll put the country maybe in the description if I remember. But these are all things you need to do when you plan to move here. And the best thing you can do is get a job ahead of time. It takes care of your TRC for you. And then you don't have the stress of worrying about, like I couldn't handle the stress if I came here and wanted to live on the tourist visa thing either. You never know when you can get an exit stamp on there. Yada, yada, yada. A couple of my buddies did the overstay thing. They're, they wasted days. I think they paid, one guy paid 600 bucks and he overstayed like 50 days. So just know that if you overstay, it's like for 50 days. I think if you're watching this video, dude, uh, comment. But uh, I think you paid 600 bucks for like 50, 60 days of overstay. So, and it wasted two days of his life. Like he was sitting at the, hello, xin <laughs> chào. So uh, he wasted two days of his life as well. I think he was sitting at, he was sitting at immigration in some little room, he told me. It was an interesting story. It's not something I'd be too keen to do personally. But you're also going to want to have a nice nest egg when you come here. Uh, I would reckon you, you're going to want five to $10,000 if you can get that. And don't go crazy when you get here and spend it all, especially if you are going to go the route and come on the tourist visa, the 30 day E visa and continuously extend until you get a job. Um, you're going to need money and don't go crazy. Don't go out partying every night. It's super easy to do here, like in Bangkok. It's very easy to get caught up and party every night and get drunk every night and do crazy shit. It takes some pretty good self-control to, uh, to not do that. So I probably should have had a bit more self-control my first few years here, but hey, nobody's perfect. 
I know mistakes were made and you'll make mistakes too but it's that if you learn from the mistakes and then get stronger from it is how you can improve in life also do not look for an apartment if you're not here uh, I would not rent an apartment before you get here absolutely terrible idea there's a thing with apartments here like you have to go look at them you have to check for noise quality especially if you're a, a light sleeper like I am Woo. Ah. like uh, I lived in a Vietnamese neighborhood and building when I first moved here and what I mean by that is all Vietnamese lived there and it was all Vietnamese neighborhood there was no expats really in this particular section that I was in and the walls were paper thin my neighbor like the houses were connected my apartment was connected to another house the neighbor would come home at like 3 a.m. and sing karaoke till like 5 a.m. I could hear him word for word like it was not cool at all man like it, it made me really not like uh, that area pretty quickly and then like a uh, a bar opened up next to the to my apartment and they had a karaoke and they would sing karaoke till like 2 a.m. So whenever they got tired enough to go home, which was super annoying as well. So I mean, this guy's going faster than lightning. I see you, bro. Got a lot of vehicles here, so we'll go after this blue, blue van. Also, I would set up a Charles Schwab or a Fidelity account so that you can have no transaction fees when you pull out money. That can, if you're using a normie bank, it'll add up to a lot. Like if you're pulling out, say, eight million dong, it could cost you up to ten dollars to pull that out from like a normal uh, checking in America. I would have multiple checking accounts. Uh, Charles Schwab is going to do a hard pull and you've got to have like a 650 or better on your credit rating. So if you know you got shit credit, don't don't uh, go for Charles Schwab. You're just going to get denied and then it's going to put a pull on your credit. So that's going to drag your score down even more. Fidelity does not do a hard pull. So you should be able to just get that one. No problem. And both those banks reimburse uh, foreign transaction fees. So that's really a big help. I would recommend that to everybody if you're going to come here, even if you're going to come here as a traveler. And so, like I was saying, don't pick your apartment ahead of time without seeing it. Maybe if you're like renting a house in Da Nang or something, like a pool, like a villa, sure, you could possibly do that. But me personally, I would want to check everything out. I would want to check to make sure everything works properly, air conditioner, water, that it's not crazy loud. Uh, I request to see apartments at 7 or 8 later at, in the evening so you can really get a feel for your neighbors around you. You know, maybe you've got a neighbor that's got five kids and they're running around all day and they're right above you and clump, 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 clump. These things can be really, really crappy. Like, it, I mean, it can ruin your experience of living here. So, vetting your apartment is one of the most important things you can do when you come here. Finding the district you want to live in and the location that you're going to be in, also important. I do not believe in a commute to work that's more than 15 minutes. If it is, you're wasting some of your life. I did it for so long in so many different places that I will never do it again. If your commute's more than 15 minutes, you're too far away. You need to be within 15 minutes of your work. Now again, that's my opinion. This isn't a written gospel or like, you know, anything like this, but this is just stuff I've learned in life that why waste all this time like commuting hello hi fat and broke fans yeah I think so fat and broke fans <laughs> always good to see some subscribers can't beat that um so yeah uh pick your apartment wisely open one of those checking accounts try to get a job ahead of time don't try to come and live here on the tourist visa like it's such a bad idea and it puts such like a, there's so many, you know, when you go look at Vienna Express and you see all these angry commenters, most of those dudes were here on a travel visa and got exited. And they're all butt hurt and pissed off because it worked for so many years. And then uncle government here decided no more of that shit. And it's because, you know, if you talk to anybody that's really in the business, like the agencies and stuff, and that that's not like another problem that people do here is they really trust these like, 
visa companies here. Like they're, they're you're your buddy and they got your back. Like a lot of these visa companies that were doing a lot of this stuff for expats, they're like blacklisted inside the place now at immigration. So there's not shit they can do anymore. They'll tell you they can, they'll take your money, but they're not very smiled upon in the immigration office anymore. The ones that have favors still are like all Vietnamese uh, visa agents that are run by Vietnamese and they pay their bribes correctly and they never did any wacky crazy shit. So don't trust one agent either. I, I recommend you contact as many as you possibly can uh, if you are in some kind of visa situation where you need extensions and stuff. I also would not recommend that you buy ATRC. Uh, as like one of those shill investor things. There is another route, which I don't think this is gonna cater to too many people, but if you've got 200,000 USD, you can park that here and get an investment visa. You can get a TRC with that. Just show proof of funds. The banks are almost back up to 8% if you put your money, I think they're at like 7.1. So, I mean, that's not bad to even leave in an account here. Like, that's pretty, pretty decent interest. That's higher than most CDs. So I mean, if you've got 200K, that's also a route. Or if you want to start a business here, like a legit business, that's also a route as well. These all require actual money up front. So I don't know how many people that really applies to. Yes, this is a long video, but I had a lot to say and I want this to be perfect. I don't want to leave anything out. So you're, another thing you're also going to have to plan for when you move here is you're going to need to buy a motorbike. And my video for what motorbike is for you will come out in the next week. It's gonna take multiple days to film because I have to find multiple different bikes. I do believe I'm gonna be able to do a lot of it at my Vin Homes because we pretty much have every bike in the garage there. So I'll just be able to walk around and kind of shoot it in the garage. But there'll be another video for like what scooter to pick out, but you need to plan for that too. That's gonna to be anywhere 10, 10 to 100 million, depending on what you want, like an actual motorcycle or just a scooter all depends even like a high-end nice scooter can be that much like new SHs I think are 130 million for like the big CC one so I mean you, you can spend kind of as much as you want on a bike or as little as you want as again is all up to you other things so if they do bring back the long-term visa you're gonna want a multiple entry so you can come and go to other countries as well you don't want a single entry never sign off on a single entry Unfortunately, that's all the e-visa is, is single entry, but that's usually standard for a short 30-day visa. I think I covered everything I want to cover. Uh, if you want to see the cost of living, I'll also link that video. I'll link multiple videos at the end, and I'll try to put them in the description. Uh, and you can get a, a, a feeling for the cost of living uh, through that video. I think I covered everything I could possibly cover. Oh, shit. I don't know of anything else to, to include in the video. If I left something out, leave it in the comments for anybody that's actually here and living here. If you're not living here, please don't comment about stuff because you don't live here. So, or, or if you lived here before, but like, yeah, let's just keep it to, to what the topic is about. As ever, I appreciate you guys. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, smash that like button. See you on the next one. Stay frosty. Thanks for watching. See you in Vietnam. Peace out.